Now, here's a development that I think is quite important regarding uh, peace and the prospects of peace and the direction that the White House may be going. Now, here's uh, coming out of D.C., the McClatchy Report uh, says that the White House sees Egyptian Energy Forum as a roadmap to Middle East peace. And let me explain what they're trying to do. There is going to be an upcoming energy summit in Cairo that will include a number of eastern Mediterranean countries. And the article says that U.S. national security officials see this uh, forum as a strategic uh, of strategic value in the, pro- in the success uh, and uh, of the Egyptian project. This is going to be coming out of Egypt, which could eventually wean European allies off their dependence on Russia, Russian fuel, and provide the basis for improving relationships. That's the roadmap to Middle East peace, one official said, building up cooperation that's clearly in your best interest. Now, during the Egyptian President al-Sisi's uh, visit to Washington on Tuesday, Trump's top aides asked for Egyptian counterparts if the uh, United States could attend the second meeting of the Eastern Mediterranean Gas Forum, a group that uh, Cairo launched in January with Jordan, Italy, Greece, Cyprus, Israel, and the Palestinian Authority. Now, the United States would, uh, would attend this uh, summit as an observer. But the fact that Israel and the Palestinian Authority are both members of this uh, organization and will attend this summit, this opens up the door to cooperation in a broader sense between Israel and the Palestinians. Now, as we know, for many, many years, major oil companies have stayed away from Israel because of the threats from the other Arab nations that surround them. But this uh, upcoming gas forum might change that calculus. It says U.S.-based ExxonMobil is now considering establishing a presence in Israel. And company officials met last month in Houston with Israeli uh, energy minister Yuval uh, Steinetz for preliminary talks. It says expanding opportunities for U.S. energy companies and brokering practical alliances based on natural resources uh, and resource requirements is an op- organization, organizing principle of the Trump administration, the official said, characterizing President Donald Trump as enthusiastic about the Egyptian uh, initiative. Now, here's a disappointment, though, from that meeting. It says it is one, uh, yeah, it is, uh, one basis of the uh, administration's greater design for regional peace in the Middle East in which opposing parties recognize the economic benefits of cooperation. Egypt is at the center of that vision, the administration officials said. Now, here's where it, where, it, where it comes at. It says, the, but their enthusiasm for Egypt's leadership on the gas forum stands in contrast with their disappointment over Cairo's decision this week to withdraw from a major strategic alliance the Trump administration is trying to build to confront Iran. Now, why they would drop out, I have no idea, but evidently, they felt it was in their best interest not to uh, stand as a direct enemy of Iran. To our understanding, the Egyptians have concerns, as uh, we understand, as everyone would, of entering into a new alliance of that sort, one senior administration told uh, official told McClatchy, confirming uh, Cairo's notice to the United States that it would pull out of the emerging group known as the Middle East Strategic Alliance. We remain extremely enthusiastic about the potential for MESA. It is unfortunate that Egypt would uh, cut itself off from that kind of opportunity, the official said, um, even including incorporating the uh, East Med Gas Forum in the wider Middle East. One primary goal for the gas forum is to explore cost-efficient ways to explore, or export regional gas to Europe its closest and wealthiest market. Now, of course, the Trump administration has scolded a number of uh, uh, European nations, especially Germany, because they continue to go down the easy road of getting uh, their natural gas and, and, and oil from Russia. So if you're looking at the European Union as to be a peace partner in this wider Middle East strategy, then this very well may be what it is because the European Union would be a considerable and lucrative partner for the Middle East uh, to send their natural gas and oil their way. Because right now, much of the European Union depends upon Russia to supply their natural gas and oil. And speaking of the European Union, a number of high-ranking former European politicians have condemned the Trump administration's one-sided Israel 
Palestine policy and called in a letter for Europe to reject any U.S. Middle East peace plan unless it is fair to the Palestinians. Now, frankly, this is probably something that I expected out of them, and uh, I will be shocked if the uh, Europeans don't in some way become partners in this uh, Middle East peace plan that the Trump administration will bring forth. It may not start out that way, but I think it's going to eventually end up that way. And, of course, the European Union also has a problem with the, the Trump administration uh, transferring their embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem and declaring Jerusalem as Israel's uh, capital. And also the annexation of the Golan Heights. The U.S. has declared that to be Israel's now, uh, new property. And if you haven't heard, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo uh, told CNN on Friday that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's threat or promise to annex parts of Judea and Samaria will not hurt a peace plan with the Palestinians. But from the information that I seem to be gathering here, it looks like the Trump administration is leaning toward, and that's just, of course, the information I've received, there could be a tremendous amount still out there that we simply don't know about yet. But from what I have read so far, it looks like that the Trump administration is just going to satisfy the uh, modern Arab world by a number of different land swaps. And that we talked about that in our last couple of videos. And we also mentioned that the uh, re refugees that are in both Lebanon and also in the West Bank, the vast majority would be taken on by uh, Lebanon and also Jordan. And the remaining few would continue in a state that would be created um, in the West Bank. And Israel would annex all of the land in the West Bank where uh, Israeli settlements were created. So it sounds like to me that the United States is going for including the Palestinian Authority if in fact they want to be included. But if they don't, then they would receive the land that they're already possessing in the West Bank. That would be their homeland. And also Jordan would take on in excess of a million uh, Palestinians who would become now Jordanian citizens. But it sounds like to me from this point on that they're going to be doing this with or without the consent of the Palestinians. The Palestinians would get their land. Jordan would cede a little bit of land to uh, Israel in exchange for the Saudis to uh, give a little boundary, boundary land to uh, Jordan. So it looks like there's going to be a little bit of movement of the boundaries between the several nations in order to compensate for what Israel will give to the Palestinians. And as you heard that uh, many of these nations will be compensated well. And that's not to mention that Egypt is possibly going to create an economic zone near Gaza so that Gazans can freely move in between these uh, uh, business zones and back to their homes in the Gaza Strip. But also it would lighten up on the congestion that uh, is overpopulating the Gaza Strip. Well, it's being projected that the Trump administration will release their uh, final report deal of the century uh, a month from now on May 5th and uh, May 14th. Now the only question is is whether or not this is actually the plan that the Bible speaks about in Daniel 9 27 that will be broken uh, about the midway point of the tribulation period. And certainly if you don't know the Lord today is the day that you need to get saved. You know there will be 150,000 people that will die today. The Bible says that the vast majority will end up in a burning hell. Don't let that happen to you. Come to the Lord today, ask Him to save you, repent of your sins, believe that He died on the cross for you, and from this day forward, live for Him. And certainly, you Christians, you need to get a copy of my Tribulation Period Survival Guide. Go down to the description section in this video, click on the link, uh, it'll take you to either the paperback version, which costs $8, or the digital version, which is written in nine different languages, that you can download for free. But I would recommend that you do this as quickly as possible. You certainly don't want the world telling your lost friends and loved ones how they need to react once the tribulation period begins. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.